MVP votes, most improved votes. Um, so I was saying is when I, when I suggested, you know, you may want to duck the nuggets. It wasn't just about losing the series. It was the repercussions from getting beat up again by Denver. So let's say you, lo- you get swept last year. You get beaten four or five this year. And LeBron's got some options, and he's thinking, I don't have the right coach. I don't have the right roster. I'm a mile from Denver. If you face Oklahoma City and you win, and I think they would, it's a very optimistic offseason. It's hopeful. It's, hey, we just got to tweak. So let's just say the Lakers get doused, and I think they'll be competitive, but they're not Denver. What do you think LeBron's offseason looks like and sounds like? Look, I, I think he stays in L.A. I think he's settled there. Um, he's obviously got his family there and all his businesses and stuff. The only question is, what about Bronny? If, if a team agrees to draft Bronny and they want LeBron there as well, does that entice him to leave? Now, what I think he should look at, Golden State, I saw you talking about that earlier. That would be great, but I don't see him going to join Steph's team. Right. Because... You know, it's Steph's team. And if they say they won a championship, then, yeah, they both would get huge credit, but some would give Steph a little more because it was his squad. Colin, I think the place would be Philly. Now, I don't think he'd do it, but I think if he's like, I want to win, I think Philadelphia would be the place. You have Tyrese Maxey there. They have the money, Yeah. all right? And Joel Embiid, who I don't think – Colin – I don't think MB is going to be at his best ever in the playoffs because I think he's always going to be banged up. He came back and played, what, five regular season games and got banged up. Yeah. Yeah. All right. A little satellite malfunction there. We'll get back to Chris Broussard in a second. (laughs) Um, It's interesting about Embiid. So Jokic beat him a couple years in the MVP. And then the Embiid MVP year felt a little bit like it was an anti-Jokic vote. But the difference is the minute Jokic had the squad, he became the world's best player and ran through the playoffs. So, you know, Embiid to me, like there's been this sort of, you know, we give everybody time. You know, like Giannis, we give him plenty of time. It's like he won. Now we want a second. But it's like Calipari. He did win a title. We want a second, but as long as you're viable, it's when Calipari couldn't win in March against St. Peter's, he got in trouble. So let's go back to Chris Broussard. So what you're basically saying is Embiid's never going to give you a 20-game playoff run because that's physically not what he's capable of. That is exactly what I'm saying. This was the year, Colin. You had I get it. He was rehabbing for two and a half months, but he still was off two and a half months. And then you play a handful of regular season games. And in those, he got banged up. And he looked like he was playing on one leg in that play-in game. And so I actually have the Knicks beating them in seven precisely because I don't think Embiid's close to 100%. But LeBron could go there, be their number one guy in the playoffs. Embiid is going to play, you know, fairly well, give you maybe 23 and 11 or something like that. And then you got Tyrese Maxey. And so I, if LeBron's just looking for a championship and one that people won't scoff at, you know, oh, you just like a Durant in, in Golden State, Philadelphia, I think, would be the place. So a lot of people like the Knicks over Philly. I think they're a bit too Jalen Brunson dominant. Um, and, I, you know, it's like Donovan Mitchell and the Cavs. They're just a bit too Donovan Mitchell don, uh, dominant. But let's say, let's say... The Knicks beat him. And the betting market is go either way. And a lot of people I respect like the Knicks. If the Knicks beat Philadelphia with basically the three best players in the series, Philly would have two of them. Does that make New York? I think about if I'm a free agent or if I'm a guy with options, does just winning this series for New York change the league view of Jalen Brunson is an A star and they can go out and get a big dog in a trade. Does it change fundamentally a seismic change? They don't have to win a championship, but to do a number two seed, Philadelphia has got a deeper roster and you beat them. This feels like it could be so significant for the Knicks. Yeah, look, I think players 
definitely respect Jalen Brunson, and I think he's the type of guy you would want to play with. And you're right. If they get a series – now, I'm only picking them because I think Embiid is limited. I would certainly pick Philly if he was 100%. But Jalen Brunson, high character, high work ethic, doesn't have like, you know, a superstar kind of persona where he's all, you know, into himself. I think guys would love to play with him. The question is going to be, do guys want to play in New York? Some do. I like Carmelo Anthony, Amari Stoudemire, and some just don't want that. They don't want the back pages every day. Yeah. Tim's a great coach. We all know that. He also will drive you into the ground. Right. And does a superstar want to play all 82 games uh. like it's a playoff intensity? Right. And those are questions that, it, you know, various individuals are going to have to ask when they consider going to New York. All right. So, um, you know, I, I think a really interesting series is a guy we've talked about a lot is the Suns and the T-Wolves. Bradley Beal got healthy, and they got really good late. Grayson Allen, not that it was a renaissance, but he was better than anybody thought. He ended up, so yes. between Allen, Beal, Booker, and KD, you can shoot your way to giving a Boston-Denver team trouble. I, I think they beat Minnesota. I think Minnesota, um, it's a really well-coached, well-prepared team. Where are, because I thought Phoenix was the um, most disappointing team in the league. But you watch them now, and you watch their last nine or ten games down the stretch when Beal was healthy and cranking. They were great. They were they had one stinker against the Clippers at home. They were really good. Yep. Where are you on Phoenix today? No, they were, and they had a tough uh, schedule down the stretch, right? Or they yeah. could have ended up in the play-in, which I thought they would with that schedule. I, I like. Fe I think this is going to be a terrific series. I think it's Phoenix's perimeter play. Uh, and they do have some size with Nurkic, but also against Minnesota's size. Obviously, and, and let's see if Anthony Edwards can really emerge and take over this series. I don't like Phoenix. I don't really give them a chance to get out of the West at all. But I think they could get past Minnesota. I, I, like I said, I'm just intrigued by this one. One thing that hurts them, and again, they did play well down the stretch. But their lack of a point guard, Colin, early in the season and really throughout most of the season, their problem was fourth quarters. Yeah. And what their problem was was you didn't have a playmaker, a point guard with that mentality who could get the ball to the right guy in the right spots, who could control the tempo. Devin Booker can bring the ball up court. So can Kevin Durant and Bradley Beal. Booker can give you seven assists. And Beal and Durant can give you five. That doesn't mean you're a point guard. Right. That just means if you drive and draw some attention, you know how to pass. But that doesn't give you mean you have the mentality of a Chris Paul or somebody like that. And I think that's something that if you face a Denver or some of these top teams in the, in the league, I think that could come down in crunch time and hurt them. Um, you know, I was saying this. If you go inspect the last five years of Golden State, and I'm a Warrior guy, love Kerr, I love them. Three times missed the playoffs. Once they won one series. And if you go back and dissect, do a deep dive on their championship year, they faced a Denver team. Murray was hurt and Porter was out with an ACL. They beat the most immature team in the league with 22-year-old John Morant. Luka didn't have a number two. And um, who else was there in there? Boston. Boston. Oh, oh, and Boston. In who, the finals. Who, yeah. they didn't have any big game experience, and you had Wiggins, Clay, Steph, Draymond. It was an experience. It was, I get Kerr. I mean, it was basically the old guys against the kids, and the old guys, Steph Curry goes to Boston. Yeah. And that was a little bit predictable. When you put old and young guys, Boston wasn't quite ready. Outside of that, they missed the playoffs three times and then won a series, a seven-gamer against Sacramento. I think they got to pivot, major pivot. Do you? I Look, I don't think it's black and white yet. I agree. That championship, you look back at it, and it's, like, stunning. It's like, I mean, you got to give Steph and those guys all the credit in the world, but it was like they just kind of pulled the rabbit out of the hat and won that championship. Um, but they had Colin, they finished the season strong. They had a top five record in the league since the all-star break. All right. And, and with, with Draymond on the floor, they played good basketball, as you know, 
So I think they just have to go into this offseason with a plethora of options. First thing, I'm shopping Andrew Wiggins. I'm yes, like aggressively yes. shopping him, yeah. seeing if I can trade him, right? What can I get back for him? Obviously, with Clay, I got to bring, you know, you got to come back on a serious discount. All right, I'm look. They need a second scorer for Steph. Yes. I don't think Kaminga is going to nope. be that. You know, he's he's played well. He emerged. But he's not ready to be a second scorer yet. So that's what they have to go find. I would also, Colin, I would talk to teams. I'm not shopping him. I'm not definitely got to trade him. But I would talk to teams about Draymond. Mm -hmm. What can I get? What What are you willing to offer? Not that I trade him. But just to see what the market is for him and if maybe I get, uh, you know, a, a better group of players for him. He's integral to that team, obviously. So it'd have to be a haul for him, which you probably won't get. But I would certainly be open to it. I think Steph will stay there this year for sure. He'll probably yeah. finish his career there. But I think this notion of, well, he's going to want to leave somewhere to win a championship. I think he'll at least give them another year and maybe start looking after that, but I don't think they have to worry about losing him. Brew, you're great as always. First things first after us, my man, and uh, have a good show and a good weekend. Thanks, Kyle, and you too. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, I what I love about the playoffs is, you know, this year we got all almost all the guys, you know, Embiid's a little banged up, Giannis a little banged up, both, uh, you know, Embiid's going to play for sure. I think Giannis will miss calf injuries are weird because you always think you're more ready than you are. Uh, groin injuries and calf injuries, you always think, I'm fine, and then you re-injure him. So if, if Bucks are going to probably keep Giannis out for two games, Indiana with Giannis is a problem because of their pace. But Indiana is – Bucks are big. They're old. They're experienced. They're going to lean on Indiana. They're going to score in the paint. Indiana's more of a pace team. So that's a fascinating series. It doesn't mean you have to be a great team to be a great series. Halliburton hasn't quite been the same either, second half. You know, he got off to that torrid start. He was like top three, top five guy in the league. Hasn't been the same. But Indiana's very good. Very good. Yeah. Uh, Jordan with the news.